I don't even understand what just happened there. Welcome to the channel. My name's Matt. This week we're going to be working on that ugly bathroom medicine cabinet. Our home has been smoked in for the last 30 years and everything around here has been smoked in and turned brittle and gross and, well, I mean, just look at this. So today we're going to rip part of that medicine cabinet apart, but keep some of it because I would like a medicine cabinet and turn it into this. Step one is going to be removing the mirror glass from the actual medicine cabinet. Usually they're attached either with rivets or screws. We got lucky on this one and it's actually just attached with a whole bunch of stupid Phillips screws. So I can actually just unscrew it super easily from the gross plastic piece. We're going to save the gross plastic piece for now because that'll make sense later. I mean, ironically, we should just replace the gross plastic piece, but, well, you, you know, things just have a way of working themselves out. Here's the mirror that we picked out for the bathroom. You can go pretty hog wild here. As you can see, we didn't. We just picked out a normal mirror that fits the space, well, like it should, and doesn't look awful. The only recommendation I do have when you're picking out a mirror for this kind of project is to make sure there's a good area where you can screw into. Honey Pizza picked this one out, and I was already on board with this choice simply because of how it mounted. They use screws in this area right here, so that tells me I can screw into it with pretty much no problem and it'll be able to support the weight, and it won't break out the other side and destroy the whole project. The next thing you need to grab is these bad boys. Full extension ball bearing slide set. Basically, these are the sliders out of the kitchen cabinet drawer, and we're gonna modify their intended purpose to work on our mirror. I'm a little bit partial to the soft close sliders, even though they're a little on the pricey side, because I like it when you can just take the mirror and kind of just shove it over and it'll grab it and tug it the rest of the direction. My issue with the cheap ones, which I've used before, the problem is the mirror will bounce when you go to close it and it'll just start sliding back open again. Also, if you're like me and not everything in your life is level, uh, it'll try to slide towards the unlevel side. We're gonna get this mirror ready by taking off all the hardware that doesn't make any sense for this because we don't need it and it's just gonna get in the way of the rails on the top and bottom and uh, I'm cheap so I'm gonna reuse some of those screws. Now that we took this hardware out, it looks like in those areas we can't go deeper than about three-eighths of a bald eagle or, I don't know, like a centimeter or something in non-freedom units. Now be sure to rip at it like some sort of baboon, because you don't want to be able to return any of this, because you didn't make any mistakes, and you're not going to need to return anything. Get out of there. Hey, screws. Earlier I mentioned the soft close hinges are worth it from the bounce back issue if you don't use it, but there's another reason I like them. If you're sliding the mirror back, did you see that? That is a miracle of modern science. Once you get it close enough, it just pulls it back on its own. That is amazing. This is a 20 inch slider that's going on a 24 inch ish mirror. You can't get much smaller than that on slider size for that size of a mirror. If you do go smaller than that, they'll be warned it might not fully uncover your medicine cabinet. Even this is gonna be pretty tight. Let's say you have a 24 inch mirror. If you got a 24 inch slider, you would see this edge behind your mirror when you're like looking at your bathroom from like an angle. If you get a smaller one of these, it'll be kind of tucked behind the mirror and you're less likely to see this ugly blue corner. Now I do recommend if you do see it, painting it the same room color and you'll never really notice it. But if you just get a couple inches smaller anyways, you kind of just don't have to worry about it. One of the reasons I love doing this project is A, you never see it and B, it always annoys the heck out of me when the mirror over your sink isn't lined up. Ours is approximately three quarters of an inch to the left. You can either show off your math skills and uh, figure out exactly where it needs to overhang the stud situation, or you can just do what I do and make it a little bit longer, like about an inch, to soak up that three quarters of an inch and then just mount it wherever it looks good. you need to make sure your measure three times cut four paid off. You really need to engage the rotator cuff because that's that's the strong part of the arm and then you got to hold her in place lined up with everything and then zip a screw in there with that center line. Okay, 
Okay. Remember to breathe because you're going to forget to breathe because it's a little rough. And while you're holding it because it's really easy to hold up with one hand, go ahead and fiddle with getting a screw on the tip of your screw gun. That'll make everything easier. And go ahead and zip a, you know what, how about a second one in there just for some added protection. I don't want this ripping off the wall right now. Now that we've got the left side mounted, we need to do this far right mounting screws. I found if you've got a decently heavy mirror, it kind of wants to pull the rails down a little bit because these are, I mean, they're nice, but they're also made out of the, the cheesiest metal that they could make. So when you've got your mirror out here, just give her a little love and make sure she's still level when all the way out. That way, when it's fully out here, it doesn't look all sad and sagging towards the toilet, which is not where we want this project. When you attach these rails here, you gotta be careful. You might actually end up having to like kind of take them back off and loosen them around a little bit. If everything's not perfectly square, your rails are gonna bind up. So you've gotta tweak them up and down here. But also since these brackets are pretty weak, you don't wanna hammer the screws in or else it'll bend kind of backwards and create this weird ripple effect. You'll know when you've got it all aligned perfectly because when you go to slide it over, it'll catch and look perfect. If you like this whole little doodad, you should subscribe and comment below. Tell me what I did wrong, tell me what we did right, so that way when we get the patent ready, I, I, I can transfer all my notes from post-its to, I don't know, note cards. Well, if you didn't like this, there probably won't be too much mirror mounting solutions in the future. It's a, it's a very narrow demographic for me to hit, but there might be, so I'm sorry.